Good morning. So good to see you. Lou, so glad you're well enough to be back. And sandwiches are on this coming week. If we look at some things that are in grace notes this week, I want to highlight for you some things for our prayers. Dale is going to be having some surgery this week. And though I meant to raise it last week, I've been uh, starting the praying in advance for you, Dale. And you'll see in Grace Notes that people having surgery this week, I'm inviting you to begin the advanced praying for him. He's having an aneurysm repair. And it's not the kind of thing that you would wait on So we need to just bring our prayer resources to bear to get to help get them ready. And they're ready. Um, So let's just have an advance guard going on his behalf. And we'll um, pray with you as the surgeons get ready. Everyone else gets ready. And we'll, we know that that um, prayer guided you through much before and we'll be with you. Uh, when you go into surgery on Wednesday. John Stengel is also having carpal tunnel surgery on Tuesday. So I lift him up also. It was decided after grace notes were printed that Laura... um, that Laura Kratz's family would dedicate the bulletin today and some other another day in March in honor of her birthday. So we're not going to have a loud, lusty singing, but Kevin, I, I wonder if we could just have a round of happy birthday in honor of Laura today. Would you do that? And we can just hum along quietly under our masks for Laura. See how much you love Grace and your family because you dedicated the eternal light candle in honor of them, and they see how much you love Grace and they love you because they wanted to have some kind of dedication for you in Grace Notes, which we'll pick up next week. So it's it's such a nice association together, and we wish you happy birthday. You'll see there's an opportunity for card showers on the front page of Grace Notes in the bottom. Some of our other friends are also having birthdays or other occasions. And I see I made a mistake there. Nancy Sellers' birthday is actually March 31st. So you have uh, weeks to get a birthday card to her. And it won't even be late like some of the others might be. But uh, there we have some opportunities for you. Our prayer pauses are working on the website. There's a new one every Wednesday. We're having some trouble getting the full thing posted on Facebook. But if you want to hear Kevin singing each week, uh, the website is the best place to go, and you click on the Celtic Cross. Um, Otherwise, you can still go to Facebook, and you'll get it in two pieces. uh, But we're having trouble loading the song onto Facebook. Rice bowl, the bowl is right there under the cross. And our rice bowl offering for various ways of addressing hunger goes all the way through Lent. Uh, Let's see. Okay, we've decided uh, with a couple of ministries working together that we will do an egg hunt to go this year. And we're still trying to figure out when we'll have the distribution points and if we'll have a separate one for our own kids uh, and the community kids. But right now, we've decided starting today that we'll be gathering eggs and candy. You can, um, we'll be giving the eggs away this year instead of saving them for um, future years because of the pandemic. And people will just pick them up already packaged in 
bags with a craft. So you can, the craft Christian Connections people are preparing. You can bring your plastic eggs already filled with candy, or you can donate the candy and the eggs separate from each other. Whatever works for you. There's a bin outside and there's baskets inside. Um, Our goal would be to have, if we could do it, 200 bags with six eggs a piece. You can do the math yourself, but I've done that and it's 1,200 eggs. And maybe we'll do 150 bags. We don't know, but you know, Grace has been amazing, so we're going to start with that goal and we have two weeks. So that's a hundred dozen eggs or, um, 1200 if you do it either way. And we could do 150, but let's see what we can do in the next two weeks. So I imagine that like me, some of you probably have some eggs squirreled away somewhere that you would haven't used yet. And you might just bring them in or you might find them on sale. Um, no nuts, no peanut butter. Um, let's see what we can do in the next two weeks. And you can package them together if you'd like to do that. You can bring them in separately. Your pleasure. Let's see what we can do together. Are there other announcements? Karen. (laughs) Other announcements? Yes, Kathy. Thank you. Great. Thank you. Yes, Jamie. Yay, Lennon. How did that happen? (laughs) Lou. Thank you. Thanks, Lou, for your leadership and your vision. Appreciate that. Okay, one last announcement. We'll do this in a little bit, but you should have two of these cards. If you don't, raise your hand and the usher will get them to you. You'll need these in a little bit. Each of you needs two. Raise your hand if you don't have them. And your usher will provide you with two. And then we'll turn our hearts into worship as Kevin plays the prelude.
Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the keeper of the covenant, the source of steadfast love, our rock and our redeemer. God hears us when we cry and draws us close in Jesus Christ. Let us return to the one who is full of compassion. Fountain of living water, pour out your mercy. Beloved, God's word never fails us. The promise rests on grace. By the saving love of Jesus Christ, the wisdom and power of God, your sins are forgiven, and God remembers them no more. Journey in the way of Jesus. Let us pray. Holy God, through your Son, you have called us to live faithfully and act courageously. Keep us steadfast in your covenant of grace and teach us the wisdom that comes only through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Please be seated. Before our readings today, I'd like you to take out your cards. And we'll take a moment just to reflect silently with your cards. As Lou said, in relation to the sandwiches, 51 weeks of doing sandwiches because we're about to come to the one year anniversary of the lockdown. The virus was circulating circulating among us, but we did not know it then. And on the 13th of March, the um, daycare center was closed down. The order came from the governor. And the 15th of March, we had no worship in person, the 22nd of March. And we had no idea we would still be at restrictions at this point. In this year, and as we come to the first anniversary, now for what do you pray? On one card, I would like you to use a word, a phrase, a couple of words, your prayers of petition to God. How would you ask God for what do you pray? Just take a few moments and write them down. We're going to surround ourselves with these prayers for the rest of Lent through Easter so we can remind ourselves that God is mighty and that we can appeal to God for that which is so distressing around us. For what do you pray?
on the other card, if you would. For what pandemic blessings are you especially grateful? For what pandemic blessings are you especially grateful? As you go, would you please put these in the offering basket? We continue now with our readings. The reading is from the 20th chapter of Exodus. God spoke all these words. I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an idol, whether in the form of anything that is in heaven above, or that is on the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them or worship them, for I am the Lord your God, I'm a jealous God, punishing children for the inequity of parents to the th third and fourth generation of those who reject me, but showing steadfast love to the thousandth generation of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not make wrongful use of the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not acquit anyone who misuses his name. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. You shall not do any work, you, your son or your daughter, your male or female slave, your livestock or the alien resident in your towns. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth the sea and all that is in them, but resteth the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and consecrated it. Honor your father and your mother, so that your days may be long in the land that your Lord your God is giving you. You shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife, or male or female slave, or ox, or donkey, or anything that belongs to your neighbor. The word of the Lord.
The Holy Gospel according to John in the second chapter. <clears throat> the Passover of the Jews was near, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In the temple he found people selling cattle, sheep, and doves, and the money changers seated at their tables. Making a whip of cords, he drove all of them out of the temple, both the sheep and the cattle. He also poured out the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. He told those who were selling the doves, Take these things out of here. Stop making my father's house a marketplace. His disciples remembered that it was written, Zeal for your house will consume me. Then the Jews said to him, What sign can you show us for doing this? Jesus answered them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. The Jews then said, This temple has been under construction for 46 years, and, and will you raise it up in three days? But he was speaking of the temple of his body. After he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this, and they believed the scripture and the word that Jesus had spoken. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. <clears throat> I'd like you, if you would, just to open your bulletin to the reading from Exodus and have it before you. We'll need that in a few moments. Let us pray. Lord, keep us steadfast in your word. We ask humbly in Jesus' name. Amen. The word used most often for covenant in the Bible comes from a root word that means to fetter. When we're in a covenant relationship with one another or with God, we are fettered or bound to each other. As we've been hearing about the covenants in these weeks of Lent, God establishes the relationship, puts the covenants in place, but then God says, as we see them developing, especially now with this week, here's your side. Here's how I want you to live. You're not to have any gods, any other gods, before me. Put nothing else before me. You're not to take up the name of the Lord for emptiness in vain. Now, when you look at this set of commands, commands, I know most Americans don't like to be told what to do. But look for a minute at these words. Out of these 10, only two are commands in this sense, telling us what to do. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Honor your father and your mother. All of the others are, strictly speaking, called prohibitions. Do not kill. Do not steal. Do not commit adultery. Don't desire what doesn't belong to you. They are not do this, but you shall not do this. Now, what difference does this make? They're not meant as a list of don'ts that box you tight into a corner. The best English translation for the Hebrew word that means commandment is not commandment. That gives you too much of a sense of law and punishment. You shall not. Now, a better translation into English is words. And if you see at the top of the reading there, it says, God gave all these words, not commandments. They are words from God for us, sayings for us, which set a fence around us, a wide boundary out at the horizon as far as we can see. They tell us not what to do, just what to avoid for the sake of our health, our life, 
and the health of our life together as a community. They are words that help us to understand the inner space of our life together. They're a boundary at the far edge that sets us free within it to love and to serve God, to honor and respect each other the best that we are able to do it. You are not to murder. You are not to testify against your fellow as a false witness. You are not to steal. These are the outer boundaries of our common life. They do not tell us how to live with each other, how to respect and to love each other. They only set the context that we have been claimed and redeemed by God, who gives us the wide, a wide outer fence for our life and our health. Maybe that's why the early rabbis built up 613 commandments, big ones and little ones, to help fill in what it means to live with each other. Or maybe this is why Jesus came to summarize all the law, the 10 and the 613, in just one double command, love the Lord your God with all your heart and love your neighbor as yourself. There was a study done among children on playgrounds where there was no fence around the edges. The youngest children would just cling to their teachers. Children a little older would hang near the build ring. But there, when there was a fence, children moved out from the teachers and buildings, playing over a wide space, free to explore. We need boundaries for life and for freedom. We need the no's to be clearly articulated to be able to discover the yeses, to discover what is right for us and for our lives. <clears throat> Some years ago, jazz pianist Keith Jarrett became ill with chronic fatigue syndrome. He was so ill that he could not sit at the piano and play. It went on long enough that he doubted he would ever be able to play the piano again. His worst fears did not come to pass. But when he could begin to play again, he could only play a few minutes a day. Looking back on it later, Jarrett described it in this way. In that time when I could first play again, in order to be able to play at all, I found myself asking, what is essential about this song? How can I bring it down to just the pieces that have to be there in the melody and the harmony? It reminds me, though I heard this story quite some time ago, it reminds me of what we've had to do to be able to worship again in person. We can't have a worship service where we just add things in again and again but we have a strict amount of time that we can be together in person. What is most essential when we gather? And if we decide we baptize, what has to move out of the way to be able to do that and still stay in our time-restricted space? There's a beauty and emotional intensity in those songs that Jarrett had never had in his playing before. I can say that as a listener to his music. The song's beauty arose out of what he could not do. His music deepened and grew through the limits placed upon him by his illness. Was the illness itself a blessing? I don't know that Jarrett would say that. But he found that the limits imposed on him by his illness brought him a gift that he had not thought to ask for before. It makes me ask for myself, what shall I make of this one precious life that God has given me? And what of this one day, today, that the day that I now have before me? Limits and boundaries, they are also gifts from God. 
we don't live everywhere and in every time. We live here and now with this child and not another, this partner, this home and neighborhood, this country, this family, this people, with grace as it is now in this moment, not as it used to be or as it might yet become. What the commandments help us see is that God's blessings are often found within the givens of our lives, within these limits and boundaries. We stand in the realm of divine blessing. You have seen, says the Lord, how I bore you on eagles' wings and brought you to myself. Now within our covenant, where I am your God, and you are my people. I would have you live within these boundaries, but also know the freedom that my love gives you. Amen. Please rise. When I say, hear us, O God, you respond with, your mercy is great. Relying on the promises of God, 
we pray bodily for the church, the world, and all in need. <clears throat> there is no God before you. Purify the faith of your church, that your people place your trust in nothing beside you. Your name is holy. Guide your church, that in every situation your people's words and actions honor your name. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. The heavens declare your glory. Renew your creation. Provide leaders in the struggle for clean air and water. Protect creatures and crops that rely on healthy ecosystems. Give all the people the willingness to repent when our way of life pollutes the earth and skies. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Your foolishness is wiser than human wisdom. Fill leaders with the foolishness of your peace and mercy. Your law defends the vulnerable. Work through legislatures, judicial systems, and systems of the law enforcement to protect the well-being and freedom of all. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Your weakness is stronger than human strength. Protect those who are vulnerable and give courage to all who are suffering. Defend victims of crime and, being re and bring redemption to those who have harmed others. Give Sabbath rest to all who labor. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. You call us to proclaim Christ crucified. Give clarity to grace and to our leaders so that we might follow Christ beyond our own habits and comfort. Clear out anything in our common life that would obscure the gospel from us or that simply serves our own interests. Hear us, O God. Gracious God, we pray for those whose needs are especially great this day. For people whose rentals are about to end through eviction, for the hungry and the cold, especially those in our own community, and for those facing surgery, especially Dale and John, that the hands of doctors and nurses and loved ones might convey your love to them. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. The cross of, cross of Christ is your power for all who are being saved. We praise you for those whose suffering reveals a witness to the cross of Christ. Grant us that kind of courage and freedom in life and death. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We entrust ourselves and all our prayers to you. O faithful God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Thank you. Putting our hands on our hearts, let us find someone to catch with our gaze and share the peace of Christ in that way. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Let us pray. Faithful God, you walk beside us in desert places and you meet us in our hunger with bread from heaven. Accompany us in this meal that we may pass over from death to life with Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, Jesus took the cup and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and deliver us from evil. But deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. The body and blood of our Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. God of steadfast love, at the table you gather your people <coughs> into one body for the sake of the world. Send us in the power of your spirit that our lives bear witness to the love that has made us new in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God bless you, that you may be a blessing. In the name of the holy and life-giving Trinity. Amen. Go in peace, share the good news. <laughs>